car tunes, bus tunes, truck tunes, which is the right tune. Yeah, you might find out, and I don't know about that, with Jim Jeffries. Don't, don't tell them, let them figure it out themselves. Were you trying to think of another tune? No, nah, threes. Look, that's how comedy works for all the threes. I thought you were reaching. I thought you were trying to get another one. No, I could plane tune. Yeah, they all they all work. Boat tune, just vehicle tunes. Yeah, submarine tune. Makes you wonder why is it called a cartoon? Sub tune. We uh, had a cartoon. We had an animation special. We never asked that question. Why is it called a cartoon? <clears throat> I'll text him. <clears throat> There's no way for us to find out. Um, um, this week coming up, big big week for you. Big week, big week. We're recording a special. Yep. I'm coming to see. We just did a sold out weekend in Kelowna and Vancouver. The crowds were awesome. Got me pumped. I'm ready. No, I'm you were ready. just in Columbus, and Pittsburgh. Oh well, two weeks ago those specials. Okay, <laughs> we haven't we haven't actually recorded the Columbus and Pittsburgh ones yet, but the ones in Vancouver rocked, and I'm sure Columbus and Pittsburgh will be fine. But now the big ones coming up. Big ones coming up. We're recording the special. The set list is down. We're ready to go. Uh, Forrest is going to be there. My friend Tommy Campbell's going to be there. And uh, look, you're going to be there if you bought a ticket. If you didn't, they're already sold out, but you'll be able to see it on Netflix. Maybe for the third, there might be some tickets. Uh, there might be some tickets for the, no- the day before the day third, before, yeah, yeah, because we added that show on as a warm-up gig. Yeah, go to Jim Jeffries. But it's, it, it'll, be, it'll be tight. Go to jimjeffries.com, check it out. There's probably still some tickets for Las Vegas a couple weeks Las later. Las Vegas still has some tickets. They're always still close and to the And there's some tickets for the Asia tour. If you're in Asia... I, I just did. I just did a whole Asia uh, press tour last night. How'd right? that go? I like. I was on Chinese speaking radio. <laughs> yeah. Where they were trying to speak English, and then I, my thick accent. I don't think a lot of information got across. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, right. didn't you tell me in Malaysia, they were like, last time you were in Malaysia, and you're like, I think it was in Malaysia. And oh, no, like, there was a bloke that was like this. So this is your first time coming to Malaysia, and, and like the first radio interview, and I said, I think I came to Malaysia yeah, on did. the last trip, like this, right? And he, and he goes, and I go, because I went, I did an Asian tour back then. He goes, no, you went everywhere but Malaysia. He goes, oh, I'm a comedian. I, I follow your work. I would have known if you were here. And I was like, oh, well, I'm looking forward to coming to Malaysia, yeah. right? And then I go on the next radio show and they go, they go, uh, they go, so you're coming to Malaysia. I go, well, yeah, I've never been to Malaysia. I, I'm looking forward to it. And the radio DJ is like, you were here last time. And I was like, fuck that guy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was with you. I was with you. <laughs> Two botched interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I you went Kuala Lumpur. That's because, where you're going to Because I again. feel sorry for there was There was a bit with Justin Bieber when they were doing like a police interview with him about throwing eggs or something like that. Or something, someone was doing a lawsuit against him. And there's a video of him going, um, they go, uh, they said, so when you were in Australia um, in 2012, right? Something like that. And he's like, looks up to his person, he goes, did we, did we go to Australia? Yeah. Did, we go, did we go to Australia? Like yeah. that, right? And they're like, like yeah, he goes, I, I don't know. Was I in Australia? Like that. And the Australians got a bit uppity about it. They were just like, well, you should remember we were Harbour Bridge and all that type of stuff, right? <laughs> now, Australia, I believe, is a fairly memorable place, but I get it, man. The cunt's going everywhere. <laughs> he just leaves his hotel room, goes straight to the gig, back to the hotel room. It gets confusing. All the we, venues probably look the same from the stage. We were there for t- less than 24 hours, too. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we flew into Kuala Lumpur and then we drove from there to Singapore in a van. We stopped at a KFC on the side of the highway. I rem- and, I, uh, as soon as you remind me, I remember all that because we drove through there. But, but everyone's always like, uh, do you know much about what's going on in politics over here? And I'm like, no. Yeah. Are you going to be talking about Malaysia? And I said, look, I'll talk about what I did that day. Yeah. You know, that's all I can offer you. I went back there on my own and did the, the Crack House Comedy Club, which just it recently just closed, shut unfortunately. Down but, yeah, these fucking idiots. Yeah. The Crack House. It was called the Crack House. That's a great yeah. name for a comedy club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. It was a great club. Crack I did, House. I did two nights there. It was really fun, and I actually got the sequel on Lumpur a little bit. Unfortunately, it closed. So, but um, yeah. Anyways, go right, to jeffries.com and you got any shows, shows to advertise for us? Um, no, you can just go to my website fourshot.net. I got some shows on there, but also. I've got the Merman podcast to do with Dave Williamson. You can listen to that Merman podcast. And, um, but our podcast oh, is... You just kicked your dog. Sorry, buddy. Uh, the <laughs> ID Cat podcast on Instagram and then our Patreon. 
Um, subscribe to that yeah. if you haven't already. We just did a really good podcast of that with lots of stuff where I didn't kick my dog. <laughs> and uh, We did a quiz show episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's let's, it. Right? Yeah. Let's do some ads. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working out for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes the therapist the closest thing to a guide to her of the complex engine that is you. Hey, I think that made sense. BetterHelp was, has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. I myself uh, do use uh, this actual uh, app myself, uh, this web page. I, um, I, I, I go to therapy. Um, sometimes when I'm on the road and I need a therapist, I find doing it online uh, a lot better for me. Uh, it helps me free up my head. Look, everyone deserves to feel their best. BetterHelp makes it easier for you to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people and professionally, uh, who, who are professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible and more affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match up with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be more simple. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with better help. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash IDK. That's betterhelp.com slash IDK. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef, ma Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not for the other way around. Green Chef has options for every lifestyle. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Keto, keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, fast and fit, Mediterranean and gluten free. That's for all you people out there. They're offering more customization than ever before with three new flavorful protein choices on the menu. Swap the protein in any meal that features chicken, beef or salmon for USDA certified organic ground beef, USD certified organic chicken and wild caught sake salmon. Sockeye maybe. Jack just looked at me. For those on the go, Green Chef has 10 minute lunches. Each week's menu includes two convenient, low-prepped and nutritious lunch recipes ready for you in just 10 minutes. No cooking required. Perfect for when you're on the go or press for time at the office. Eat well at lunchtime too. I've been getting Green Chef for about a year now and I haven't had a meal I didn't like yet. If you want to eat healthy without sacrificing taste, give Green Chef a try. Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 599. Hmm. I wonder what that might mean. Use the code I don't know 599 to get $5.99 per meal in one box and your first box ships free. You're eating for under six bucks, man. Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 599 and use the code I don't know 599 to get $5.99 per meal on your first box and your first box ships free. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. When you think, you ever think about this, of uh, traditional daily fantasy sports, you're probably thinking of drafting, uh, lineups, managing salary caps, and competing against thousands of other players, including Sharks, all for the slim chance to win a small piece of the pie. On prize picks, it's a lot easier. It's just you against the number, the numbers, just you against the numbers. Members pick more or less on between two or five players' statistics of their choice. The more picks they correctly choose, the more money they win. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you want. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, and so many more. 
Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks apps or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time receivers receive a 100% instant deposit matched up to $100 with promo code IDK. So, how that works if you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code IDK and sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. Free money. Ah, uh, we haven't had them on the podcast for a while. It's good to have them back. I've been using the pro- the product nonstop. I use it every day. When you see me on my next special and my stubbly faced hair, then I use that on the manscape on me face. So I use it downstairs and I use it on me face. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing. But you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in the the below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate hygiene bundle and, dare I say, (laughs) a Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about how your new cutting-edge ball trimmer, tell them about your ball trimmer, and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins... And join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With 20% off and free shipping with the code IDK at manscaped.com. Ah, look. You think your holiday spread's good? It's time to give thanks to Manscaped's performance package 4.0. Or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower, 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker, ear and nose trimmer. You need one. You don't think you need one until you have one, and then you go, oh, I need one of them for a while. Uh, Crop preserver ball deodorant. I don't even know what that might be, but I have a guess. Uh, Crop receiver toner performance. Huh? Crop reviver toner. Oh, crop reviver toner. Performer, box of briefs, and travel bag to hold all your goodies. Think of this as a cornucopia for your balls. Is that the right word? Cornucopia, yeah. cornucopia for your balls. But I'm going to, you know what I'm doing after this? I'm going to Google what that word means. <laughs> Their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer works uh, because it has features. A cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for more precise shave, plus it's waterproof. The Performance Package 4.0 includes the Weed Whacker to chop the worst weeds on top and on your nose and on your ears. Your nose and ear trimmers use a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system to provide proprietary skin-safe technology with help (laughs) prevent nicks, snags, and tugs. Look, I use it. It works. Just buy it. Uh, Let them worry about the technology, but I can't forget. The Manscaped Liquid Formulations, the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver. Toner Sprayer are like the pumpkin pie and ice cream after Thanksgiving. Can't live without it. Your balls will be living in turkey heaven with these formulations. As if it wasn't enough. It's time to do the dishes with Manscaped shower products. Lather some Manscaped refined body wash on their brand new signature body buffer and give yourself the lather and rinse your body deserves. Lose the loafer and exfoliate your mates. No hygiene routine is complete without Manscaped signature deodorant as well. A... (laughs) A couple of swipes of this and you'll be feeling so crisp. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate home 
hack to become a family favourite. All right, I'm always, I haven't read this much since high school. Get 20% off free shipping with the code IDK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code IDK at manscaped.com. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of them all, Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. All right. Woo. Please welcome our guests, Ricky Cervantes and Ryan Dick. G'day, Ricky and Ryan. Now it's time to play. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Judging a book by its cover. Blank. All right. Uh, look, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't mean to, you know, judge, but I, I'm going to assume you guys aren't doctors. We have a lot of doctors and professors, and I'm only saying that because of the charm T-shirt. So I, <laughs> I, 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 are you doctors? No, sir. No, no sir. So we're not talking about anything medical today. I mean, there's some science involved. Oh, are we talking about something science fiction then? No. Oh, it's real. No. It's a real thing. It's okay. real. You've been part of it. Are we talking about life? <laughs> yeah, it's been a part of your life. I don't know if I've been part of life. I don't know if I've really been part of that. It's been a part of your life, but not recently. Oh, oh, uh, uh, is it condoms? Yeah, I thought you were going to say hemorrhoids. But that's still no, 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 life, no, that's uh... still, they're, they're everlasting. I have, I have hemorrhoids that are older than me. Um, okay, uh, so science, and it's part of my life. Uh, does it involve engineering? There's some yeah, engineering involved. A little, involved. Bit. All right. a little bit. Machines? There's some yeah, big little, machines. Little big, big machines. All right, big oh. machines. We, There's some little ones in there, too. And little we, ones, too. We did mining uranium the other day. Well, nuclear power, mm -hmm. but uranium is it. That's so, a tough right. act to follow. It's not, <laughs> it's not <laughs> nuclear power. It wasn't nuclear power. Well, I haven't been, okay, but I will give I you, haven't I been will, involved in nuclear power. I will give you a hint, because the final hint I gave you for nuclear power was Homer Simpson. Mm. And Homer oh, Simpson. Yeah. Homer Simpson's another good hint for this. <laughs> <laughs> animation. No, we did oh, we that did already. animation. No, no, but it's something Homer Simpson is known for as well. Donuts. Yeah, yeah close. What's Duff? Close. What's Duff? Duff. What does Homer Simpson oh, beer, like? Oh, beer, beer. Yes, there oh, you go. Oh, yes, beer, okay. Beer yeah. brewing, that's what we're going to be talking about. All right, about. all right. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't drink beer. I, I drink non-alcoholic beer. You've drank a lot of beer. I've drank a lot of beer. Yeah. But I, I, part of the reason that I became such a bad alcoholic and started blacking out all the time was because of beer, because it was so fattening. If beer wasn't so fattening and I didn't go, I'll move over to vodka for health reasons. <laughs> it was, it was to the Because I, all I really wanted to do was drink beer and Guinness and yeah. that's all I really ever wanted. And then I was, I'm getting too fat. Better <laughs> for show for my career, I better drink vodka. Um. Ryan Dick was born in Atlanta, currently lives in Anaheim, and for 16 years he has worked at world-renowned breweries such as the Brewery. It's spelled differently. Mm -hmm. That's why I was trying to say it differently. B-R-U-E-R-Y. Modern Times and Radiant Beer Company, which led him to everywhere, a boutique and community-powered fermentorium that he opened with four colleagues and comrades mere weeks ago. So when this comes out, maybe like about a month or so ago. In the city of Orange, California. You can find info on everywhere at everywherebeer.com and on Instagram at everywherebeerco. Now, uh, I, I'm I, not done because I got to uh, tell sorry. you about Ricky too. Oh, yeah, yeah. too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky Cervantes, born in Los Angeles, California, and raised in the Chicago suburbs. I guess that's how you know Kelly. Yeah, we went to high school together. Well, uh, not at the same oh. time. Okay. Started brewing beer in 2014, and in the early days, he spent all of what is PTO? Paid time, Paid time off. off. Oh, see. From That's work. what happens when you're a comedian. You know, <laughs> to, <laughs> at the time, sh shadowing brewers in the Chicagoland area and soaking up information like a sponge. And on weekends, brewing his own batches of beer and building a following in the process before taking the plunge and going pro six years later in 2020. Foreign Exchange Brewing Company has been supplying the Chicagoland area's thirsty beer fans for the past few years with plans to open a production facility and tap room in the coming year. Foreign Exchange can be found online at Foreign Exchange Brewing dot com and on instagram at foreign exchange brewing i haven't tried ryan's beer but ricky i tried ricky's beer last time i was home because my brother had some of it and whew, delicious good work <laughs> oh, it's ricky. So sick. <laughs> good, good work ricky thank you <laughs> yeah. i liked oh, it a lot 
He's um, a professional in every sense of the word. I, I didn't read all of your, I, you sent us a lot of stuff with your bio. If there's other stuff you want us to tell us about how you got into beer and there was something else in there about like get, not getting back to people's texts that you wanted me to say, but I, <laughs> I don't know if, uh, Ryan, if you want to. Oh, honestly, that. I was going to say, if you'll give me a second, uh, for everybody watching that knows me, yeah, I just want to thank you, uh, for still being my friend. Cause I haven't fucking texted or called any of you back up in opening the brewery. So thank you. Thanks for the time. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is that how you lose friends? <laughs> I, I've lost then a Then you few. open the brewery and they all come back in for beer. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, I got to open a brewery to get them all back. <laughs> it's funny you were going, what was it? P PTO, paid time off. Paid time off, I, yeah. I, I've, I've gotten really into this show on Netflix called The Mole where it's like one of those game shows and one person's trying to sabotage, you have to figure out who it is and whatever. And there's there's a girl in it whose name's Joy and it's J-O-I, mm. right? Now, I know you're not as into porn as me, but J-O-I, that's not how you, that's, that's jerk off instructions. Oh, and so, so, so I thought everyone knew this. So I've been calling a jerk off instructions, and my wife was like, "Why do you keep doing that?" I didn't know it. See, you guys, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It's, you, 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 you need abbreviations in porn so you can get through there quickly. Yeah. There's no time for typing. Mm -hmm. You put ATM. You can't write ATM, ATM, mail. DTF, it's too much yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now I need to know what. Porn abbreviation did you think PTO was? Oh, I didn't know what PTO was. I was waiting along with Forrest. I paid time <laughs> off. I've never had paid time Pussy off. Time oral. I've never, I've never had, I've off. never, I've never not done a gig and then someone's gone. You will pay you this week anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I always like people go. Oh, the holidays are coming. <sighs> Yeah, I um, at one point had a job where there would have been paid time off, but it's so long ago, I don't remember. So PTO, that's it, yeah. My, my last job before I changed careers, I had unlimited paid time off. And what? Then why aren't you still wow. taking it? Well, so when, when a company offers unlimited paid time off, what that really means is you definitely shouldn't take it. They'll look down on it, you if you do. But I was, so nobody else that I worked with took time off. But that year I went out of the country three or four times because I was like, fuck this. Um, mm. So yeah. Okay. Right. Good, good work, I think. Yeah, thanks. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask Jim a series of questions about beer brewing. Yeah, I don't know as much as you think. I was more, I, yeah. you know, I You're was drinking, more a, you know. a, a, a consumer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. And then uh, Ricky and Ryan, you're going to grade uh, Jim on his accuracy of his answers after this 0 through 10. 10's being the best. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add those scores together. Um, 0 through 10, Bud Light. 11 through 20, bud medium, 21 through 30, bud heavy. What, bud light's your best? No, that's your no. worst. Oh, okay, that's, that's better. Worst. Bud yeah. heavy's your best. <laughs> okay. You ever had bud heavy? No. It's really good. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> gotta try it. I can't. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real beer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll give it a go. <laughs> uh, how is beer brewed? Fuck me. Uh, the time I tried to do it in a bathtub. <laughs> you tried uh, to do it? Oh, uh, when I was about 18, you know, when you're 18 and you and your mates, you just finished school and you, you're endeavoring into manhood and you're like, we'll make our own beer. Yeah. <laughs> Which always sounds like a good idea. And you go down to that beer shop and they give you like a tube and a funnel and a plastic container like you're out of Breaking Bad and wish you luck. <laughs> um, but no, I don't think I ever got to the next stage of actually making it. Okay. But it's it's uh it's it's barley and wheat and water and it's fermented over time and all that type of stuff. Okay, that's all that goes into it: barley, wheat, water, fermented. I, I want to say yeast. Yeast. Yeah, Anything but I, else? I feel like I've just done bread then. Yeah, <laughs> salt. <laughs> I think I've just made bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, beers are broken into two basic types. What are they? Uh, I would, for me personally, my two types of beers are lagers and stouts. Okay. But then, you know, I've... My man. I, I've, I've also worked in pubs in England where I've pulled, you know, IPAs and stuff like that, like actual pulled beers, not, not aerated or anything like that. So, there's, you know, there's a lot of different types of beers. But I, I like a, just a standard lager or a Guinness. What does a, quote, smash beer stand for? A smash beer. Like S M A S H. Um, well, it would have something to do with. Another the, acronym. No, it would have something to do. An acronym, right? Yeah. yeah. It's an acronym. Oh, it's an acronym. Yeah. I was about Think to of go, porn. I was about to go, like, with alcohol, there's always a mash <laughs> and no, no, a no. thing. No, okay. S M A S H. S M A S H. Small amount of shitholes. Yeah, mm. you got it. Uh, what qualifies something as a craft beer? Um. 
Blueberries. I, I, no, I think that craft beers normally have to come from smaller distilleries um, uh, or breweries for beers. Um, but I, you know, you can still have a big brand that will bring out one of their craft ones. So uh, this is <laughs> someone throws a slice of lemon in the top of it <laughs> or a slice of orange. Yeah, got it. What does IPA stand for? That an IPA, right? I've had many IPAs, yeah. but I always go back to the old one. Uh, I, I don't know. I used to have a joke many years ago that beer was my wife. I always used to go like, beer's my wife. I've met it in high school. I take it to parties with me. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not embarrassed about it being around my friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, be, yeah, beer, beer's my wife and, and drugs are the dirty bitches you see on the side. Uh, <laughs> they Cocaine and whatnot. They're more fun, but you don't trust them. And you always go back to beer. <laughs> I remember that. I, remember yeah, that. Yeah. I can't say that now. I'm actually married. <laughs> the IPA story is actually one of Ricky's favorite stories to tell. So we'll have to get yeah. back yeah, on that yeah, one yeah. later. We'll right. have to bookmark that one for you, Rick. What is malt liquor? You ever had malt liquor? I thought malt liquor, malt was something you put in whiskey. Oh, that, I don't know if that's an American. I've had a lot of malt liquor. When I was a kid, that was like what we started drinking. I thought that was a whiskey thing. No. Nah. You can have a malt whiskey. We're talking about beer. No, so no, malt no liquor. I, don't, I don't know. Okay. What are, quote, noble hops? It's it's where you, where you get one leg up and you jump around the room and you go, me lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. What, is, what are the function of hops? Oh, to get a short distance, you know. <laughs> small, uh, no, the hops, uh, the hops make it uh, give it body. Body. It's a good thing to say what, about alcohol. What is double drying? I'm sorry. What is double dry hopping, <laughs> and what effect does it have on beer? Double dry hopping, and what effect does it have on beer? Uh, I would believe it. it uh, it's when you you dry the hops once, and then you think, hmm. It's like when you get double fried fries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a bit crispier. Yeah. Makes the beer sharper and drier. Okay. Or like when you think your clothes are dry, but they're not. Yeah, you know, a dry <laughs> beer. And you touch the top of your jeans and you're like, yeah, yeah it's not dry. Still, two is dry is my drink of choice. Australian beer, two is dry or, or Heineken is my two beers. Here's one. What is the name of the foam on top of fermenting beer? Not on fermenting beer. Not, not when you pour beer. it. Well, sludge is too easy a name. Uh, uh, foam... I'll say the, uh, the yield. I know it's not right, but it's always a good word to say around things. How do you darken a beer during the brewing process? Um, you double fry the hops. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. How Perfect. many breweries are in the United States? Oh, fucking 500. Yeah. How Fuck. many gallons in one barrel of beer? Not a keg, a barrel. I don't know. I mean, a barrel. Yeah, a barrel. I guess what that's what you're brewing in is a barrel. Do the counting? Yeah. Like like you're talking like a wooden barrel? Yeah, because the next question has a keg in it. So uh, yeah, this uh, is a barrel. Tw 22 gallons. And then how many pours do you get from a slim pony keg? We're doing pints, middies, schooners. What are we doing? I know my measurements and beers very well. <laughs> Half pints, middies, schooners. Uh, let's do pints. Pots. We're doing pints. Pints, pints are pretty yeah, universal. Pints, yeah, pints, yeah, pints are the, the, the measurement of choice. The schooner is uh, very Australian, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 52 schooners. Okay, pints. 52 pints. Oh, 52 pints. Yeah. Okay. What is the most common style of beer brewed by the big breweries? Lagers. Okay. What is the oldest operating brewing company in the United States? Paps Blue Ribbon. Yeah. I think it's may I know that I don't know any of these, but I think I know that one maybe. I I, th I, I saw one of the, the the food that made America type of thing, and I know that was one of the originals. I don't know if it's the original. I think it beats Budweiser, and I believe it beats Coors. You know what I think it is? I think it's that one Yingling, which is like sounds like it's not even from there. But it's one like Yingling. Pens. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like it's old. <laughs> yeah, it does not sound like it's here. It's better if you say two no, Ling. No, Ling. no, no. That's in Pennsylvania, I'm pretty sure. All right. Can you describe a phenolic, P H E N O L I C, taste in a finished beer? Phenolic. 
Uh, it's something, it, it covers uh, the tip of the tongue and the side bits of the tongue on the palate aren't as tenderized as the, the, the tip. <laughs> Good, yeah. Yeast can survive <laughs> and continue to ferment in environments Yeast. as high as 15% alcohol by volume. True or false? True. Okay. Trappist beers must be brewed on the grounds of what? <laughs> If you listen to rap music, you'd have a funny joke for this. What? Yeah. Trappist <laughs> beers <laughs> must be brewed on the grounds of what? Yeah. Uh, Harlem. Yeah. I don't know, because you said a rap thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, but Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the oldest beer brewery in the world that has been continuously operating in the world? Continuously operating? Mm-hmm. I know, I know Stella is remarkably old beer company. Very, yeah. very old. Guinness is old. Uh, Cronenberg is a very old beer. Cronenberg's 18... And Stella, I would say Stella Artois. What about Yingling? Stella Artois. Okay. Um, a, a beer brewed with more honey than grain is called what? Oh, more honey than grain? Yeah. A beer brewed with more honey than grain is called a what? How much more honey? Is it like 80% honey? Just more. I didn't know any honey was involved. 50, <laughs> 50, 51% or more. There you 51, go. That's a shitload of honey. No, 51%. 51% more or, or, or of honey. Or more. So it's, or it more. could just be 1% more honey than grain. Oh, right? no. It's, 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 a, it's, a, right? it's, uh, it's a Winnie the Pooh. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't know the answer anyway. You guys <laughs> Generally speaking, a session beer needs to be low in what? A session beer. Has to be low in alcohol. Okay. In the brewing process, the fermentation step turns sugar into alcohol and what else? Oh, sugar goes in the ingredients. Put that into one of my ingredients. Okay. Uh, barley, wheat, sugar, yeast. Yeah. What? In, in the brewing process, the fermentation step turns sugar into alcohol mm. and what else? Fermentation turns sugar, sugar into, into alcohol, alcohol and then it turns it into something else as well. Um, it has nothing to do with the aeration. It has nothing to do. Um, it, yeah, it t- turns it into the yellow color. Got it. Couple more questions. <laughs> Generally, which ingredient is malted at the beginning of the brewing process? Generally, barley. And what is the final step in beer production? Um, putting it into bottles. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me I'm fucking wrong, man. Probably. Well, you right. should have asked what the it, second last one was. Wouldn't it be the cap? Or the label? Oh, yeah, okay. No, the, the label's label. already on. Label's on? Okay. The label's already on. I've seen those machines. What about putting it in the box? No, 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 no. The production's done then because you can drink it off the conveyor belt then. So I'd say the cap. Yeah. I've seen the and Charlie. Yep. Uh, what brewery is credited as starting the bourbon barrel aging trend? The bourbon barrel aging trend. So bourbon is, is an American uh, type of whiskey. So I'm going to say it's an American brand. And mm. I'm going to say that it's Budweiser. Budweiser. What causes skunked beer? Um, uh, aeration um, and the, the yeast going bad and, you know, not sealing something up so you get a poor odor. Like if you leave like, like you, your ball sack too long and it gets all sweaty mm, and, you get yeah. like, and then you get thrush and it goes from more than being just a bit of sweat to now it's a medical issue. Skunked balls. Yeah. Skunked balls. Mm. Okay. What is, I don't know how to pronounce this word. G E U Geese? Geese? G U E. Geese? Geese? Geese. What is geese? <laughs> Where Guse. does it come from? G E U Z E. Geese. Geese sounds to me to be French or German. It'd probably be German. The yeah, Germans are very beer. big into yeah. beer. What is geese? Uh, geese uh, is who you talk to when you're drunk. Yeah. Let's go talk to those geese over there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, gender fluid. Uh, where does it come from? Like the words, German? You think? I'd say German, yeah. Okay. Lager, last question. Lager comes from a German word meaning what? Lager. Uh, geese. Lager. Uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pale light beer in texture. Um, so I'm going to say from the German word for light. Okay. All right, Ricky and Brian, how did Jim do on his knowledge of beers? Zero through ten. Ten's the best. Beer brewing. Yeah. Hit it, Ricky. <laughs> um, overall, are you talking about the overall or, or yeah, the overall. Over, overall? Not good. Uh, I know. Uh, I didn't overall, think yeah, yeah. I don't know. What, overall, you're, you're I would, I would put me. it. I would put it at like a Bud Light Next, which is uh, about a three point five wow. out of ten. Boom. What's a Bud Light Next? 
It's like a low, it's like a it's like a low calorie Bud Light, but you know it's <laughs> okay. not completely yeah, water yeah. like Bud I mean, Light. I didn't remember that one. The, this is the thing. <laughs> so so in Amer- in America in, in Australia, a light beer means a half alcohol beer, so you'll have like 02 percent. And so like guys like my dad who are old, who still want to drink beer every day, but they don't want to get hammered. They drink light beers, right? Now light beers in America, of course, we know means low uh, carb, and it's for low calorie, low carb, yeah, yeah, low calorie, low carb. No one told me this when I came to America. <laughs> so I was going down to the improv to do my sets. I'd been here for about a week. I was meeting everyone like that. And I was just drinking what I thought were low alcohol beers. I was having like six light beers and then getting back in my car like, <laughs> I'm a responsible person. <laughs> yeah. Took a long time. And you guys don't do the half alcohol things, not in a big way. Like if you're in Australia, you'll see a 4X and a 4X light and a thing and a light and it will just be the half alcohol ones. Um, so there you go. Three and a half. All right. What? How do you do in well, confidence? Ryan's got a. Oh, should we give Ryan a score too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you guys were doing. Oh, sorry. I my think bad. they were in agreement. Well, 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 we can. Yeah, Ryan. What do you? We'll average them out. All right, Jim. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, when I was in middle school and I really just didn't want to fucking do anything, mm. uh, I would just write whatever I wanted on some of the test answers, and I would try to make my teacher laugh. And more often than not, I would end up passing the class, and the teacher would end up giving me full credit just for. Uh, just for being silly. Yeah. So if I could, I would give you Bud Platinum. I would give you 31. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks, man. Wow. Mo- most of the answers were, were actually really on point. Uh, and even when they were off, they were they were relatively close. I want to give you a nine. Whoops. Oh. Yeah. Even uh, yeah, when they, when they were off, they were they were great, man. I'm that's, sitting over here. Grinning, that's a twelve point five like out of twenty. That's a six point two five. Yeah. Okay. okay. What the yeah. fuck's Bud Platinum? I don't know. He's been- <laughs> Budweiser has so many. Yeah, versions. he said thirty-one. Yeah. Thirty-one. It's gonna I know, knock I, you on your ass. I just don't know Bud these Platinum. <laughs> Bud, Bud Platinum is like a high high alcohol uh, version of Budweiser. Nice. Oh, I didn't know Platinum was high alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give him a five on confidence. Five. It's it's funny. There's always like there's always like um, a, a flashy name for whatever beer the homeless drink. Right, <laughs> so, Miller High Life. So, yeah, yeah, Miller High Life is a big one. King yeah. Cobra. Yeah, and Steel, and the, the one in Britain is Carlsberg Special. Uh, yeah, and it's got like a really ornate type of label to it. It's like a light got yellow, a on it. and that's the that's the homeless beer of choice. I think it's like fifty cent cheaper at the Seven Eleven than the yeah. other ones. You know, Carlsberg. Well, malt liquor. I mean, I don't know when I was. Uh, not of age, we would drink malt liquor, and I feel like that would be a uh, choice to this of the home. Day I can't really drink cider because we used to get these big bottles of Strongbow, and mm. I used to just like before we went into the underage bar, I used to sit in the park and like medicine, just <laughs> <laughs> fucking knock yourself out, man. All right, I'll give you a hundred and et cetera. All right, all right, but uh, heavy. yeah. <laughs> uh, so how is beer brewed? Not in a bathtub, I'm assuming. All right, guys. I mean, it can be if you clean your bathtub really well. Mm. Otherwise, in you're prison. Have a bad you can time. do it in a toilet, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, no, actually, uh, Jim, you kind of nailed it. You said uh, barley, wheat, water uh, fermented over time with yeast. Um, I mean, beer is commonly referred to as liquid bread, so you kind of were pretty spot on uh, with by calling it bread. That was the thing I remember. Like when we, we I went to Oktoberfest when I was 21, and. Uh, we were there and we went into all the different halls and heard the umpa music and drank big, you know, steins of lager and all that type of stuff. And there was like a German tour guide who was meant to take us around all the halls, but his tour lasted till the first hall. And it was just like, no, there's some girls here. Don't need to see the other ones. Right? So, so we're just drinking these. But I remember that one thing he goes, here in Germany, uh, beer is also seen as a food item. Each beer is uh, regarded as four slices of bread. So it is more considered a meal here in Germany than a drink, right? That was the first thing he started with. And I remember thinking, are you cunts fucking having four slices of bread for dinner? Because I'm about to have six of these. It's like, oh, I don't know why I'm so full. All I had was a loaf of bread for dinner. Uh, um, Aren't there hops in there too? Yes, there are hops. Uh, that that is the one ingredient that uh, that Jim missed on that one. There was a, what is that one in for the New Zealand beer Stein Lager? That's like their national thing, and they always go on that the hops are green. That that's a big deal. I don't even know what hops are. Look at the uh, so, 
Yeah, Go you ahead, explain. Brian. No, you explain. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> turns out I'm not the expert. <laughs> yeah. No, we'd, uh, would, yeah, would, would love to. So yeah, hops and, and cannabis are, are sister plants. Uh, in America, most of ours we, we get from Pacific Northwest. Uh, New Zealand, in my opinion, has like the most beautiful hops. They're very similar to like a New Zealand white wine. So you'll get much more grassy, floral, you know, bitter, uh, you know, but in America, it's, you know, right now, everybody wants very just tropical fruit adjacent, you know, juice bomb uh, style hops. But yeah, hops uh, come from the ground, grow in vines. They are processed and, and more often than not pelletized uh, just for, for better use of consumption. Added on the hot side of beer, and and you know while we're talking about it, there is an addition you can do on the cold side. Uh, double dry hopping you can do with with either one of those. Uh, the the term it's not really my favorite. I don't really know how Ricky feels about it, but double dry hopping it sure makes it sound like a lot, right? If you use one pound of something and you double it two, that's really not that much. But if you use three and you double it, that's six. So uh, there's so many variables in in the term double dry hopping but what that yeah typically means is you are doubling down on your addition when you are recirculating the beer to get that huge burst of, of whatever flavor you're looking for i was close to saying two times hops yeah <laughs> so the I, hop went, I went with the fries analogy good answer yeah. good so answer so the hops is, is is that like where the most of the flavor comes from and then it, so it yeah can it, it can be yeah and typically in stout you know like we were talking about before stout is a very malt driven style of beer you know red ale brown ale uh, but IPA, obviously, it's it's very, very, very much about the hops. And so historically, hops were used for a preservative, you know, uh, not just for a bittering agent, but as a preservative. Perfect time to tell your story, dude. You should just go for it. It's the yeah, best yeah, no, story. There's, there's, like a, there's like a common joke, like, you know, to, to, bore, to bore somebody uh, if you're at like a dinner or, a con- or in a conversation and you say that, like, you know, hop, that hops were created to uh, essentially make IPAs last uh, the trip on a ship from England to India or India to England or what have you uh, to last that extended time, um, l- like Ryan said, as a preservative. Uh, one of the things that Ryan didn't mention is that hops are actually a flower. Um, so that actually is what a hop actually is. It is a flower that grows on a vine uh, that has very aromatic pr- uh, properties and also has uh, antimicrobial properties, which is what cre- what makes it uh, a preservative. Mm. Yeah, the, okay, yeah. so whenever we whenever we do these podcasts, I all, about food. I always think, who is the first cunt to go? <laughs> and I'll get that flour off a of vine and I'll throw it in with some bread mix, and I'll hope for the best because it feels like that was a fairly <laughs> early on invention. So where was? I know we're going to talk about the the original breweries and stuff, but where do we think the origins and the first beer was made? Yeah, we can, a, out of, we can go out of order. You can answer any question I, you want. Yeah. I, I, I would honestly guess no, probably no, yeah. made by mistake. Probably yeah. people yeah. trying to store store grains. Uh, the grains get wet overnight. There's so much natural yeast and bacteria in the air that I would imagine that the first beers uh, were actually made by mistake, and then it's people trying to recreate uh, this accidental science. Everything's was like we did an episode on cheese way back, and we found out that cheese was invented because someone poured milk into a sheep's gut to carry it somewhere <laughs> as a bag. And then it, it came out in clumps because yeah. they'd walked and it sloshed yeah. around a bit. Beer is pretty much as old as human history. Like, yeah. 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 And so. then you were talking about preserving it too, the English. We just did bread. And they, and they said that one of the uh, facts they gave us was that Vaseline was invented because they would toast the bread in order to preserve it. Like basically, and it was so hard you couldn't eat it. And Vaseline was invented so that they could choke it down when they had to travel to the desert. <laughs> they put yeah. Vaseline on. I was like, Bound. delicious. Mm. I was yeah. like, and and delicious. Nutella is just Vaseline with crushed up hazelnut. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how they the more it. you know. <laughs> no, that's not true. That last part. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, uh, beers are broken into two basic types. What are they? Jim said lagers and stouts. That's my two favorite types, personally. However, the correct answer is lagers and ales. Yeah. Ales is the bloody word. Now, when they make a Guinness, because I think Guinness is God's drink. I just, I love Guinness. That's what I miss more than anything. And I didn't used to have a lot of them because I always feel heavy, although I know they're a lower calorie beer than lagers and it's sort of a misnomer that they're, they're going to be heavy. What is the different ingredient that goes into that or is it just a different cooking method? What, what What's different? 
Um, that kind of actually ties into those. Another question dark, uh, further down the line, this is how do you darken a beer during the brewing process? Right. And, um, that comes down to roasted barley. So the same barley that you would use to make, um, or a similar barley that you would use to make a, a lager, for example, you then put that into a kiln and you roast it, um, until it gets to varying degrees of, uh, of darkness. And that also then brings out like some of those chocolate flavors that you get in, in the Guinness, um, and other stouts, um, but yeah, it's just a matter of adding um, roasted grains, roasted barley's. Uh, roasted but how do they make it so creamy? Because you have other creamy type of heads on beers, like a John Smith, which is sort of a hybrid between the two, or you know. So how do? Why does it do bubble up so long? Like it takes so long in those Guinness commercials where you just watch it. It's like it's that's like fucking beer and porn. And like the correct pour is like you do halfway and you then do wait halfway and then, and then you wait and, and, and then and it's, when I was it's nitrogen, I- right? There's nitrogen in there or yeah. something, right. right? And when I was yeah, in was- Ireland with you, it was better. Yeah, it's better. Uh, it doesn't travel. I don't know if there's a thing. It doesn't travel, or it's got to do with the water. There is an urban myth, and I don't know if this is right, but I pray it's correct. But there's an <laughs> urban myth about Guinness that I've been told by the Irish, and the, the I even got told this myth on the on the Guinness tour and all sort of stuff. That what happened was they were using the water in Dublin, where the brewing the the, the brewery is right in the city. It's like you can you can go there. There's a restaurant at the top. It's lovely. So so they get the water from the river going through the middle of Dublin, and then they drain the river because it was filled with fucking dead rats and all this type of bullshit from whatever hundreds of years or whatever. It was just filled with dead rats at the bottom of the thing. So they gut the thing. This is like, yeah, 100 years ago, clean it up, get all the rats out like that. Then everyone was like, ah, oh, it doesn't taste as good. So they dump some meat back into the river. <laughs> <laughs> Needs more oh. rats. <laughs> I, I hope that's true. I don't think, I don't think that's true. <laughs> it's an urban myth. You think they just suck the water up and don't filter it before they use it for the beer? I don't, th- I don't think 100 <laughs> years ago they had great fucking rap scraping machines. I reckon they just got 50% of them with guys who could hold their breath with a bag. Like, I don't think this was a special big machine. Uh, maybe. Um, I don't even know what the difference between a lager and a nail and a stout is. I don't, I'm, whenever I, I, I don't know anything about beer. Whenever I've drank a lot of beer, but whenever I go to a place and they're like, what do you like? I'm always like, lager. But I don't even know what that is. I know it's a lot. Like it's just your standard. I know, but I don't know what that means. Yeah, maybe you guys saying. could give us yeah. a little basic difference between the, the few of them. Um, yeah, so it, a lot of it comes down to do with um, not only the yeast that's used. There are lager yeast and then there's ale yeast, um, which ferment in different ways. But on top of that, too, how it's actually brewed and and, uh, and cellared is, um, plays a part in what makes an ale an ale and a lager a lager. So lagers are usually uh, fermented at lower temperatures and then uh, they're fermented for longer or cellared for longer. Um, and what that does is that allows them to kind of mellow out and become, you know, clean, easy, crisp drinking. Whereas uh, an ale could take, uh, you could ferment a little bit warmer. Uh, and what that does is uh, that'll also ferment it quicker um, and obviously has a lot of malt character uh, to where any kind of like imperfections were, uh, would be kind of buried in, in that additional flavor, whereas a lager is got really nothing to hide behind. So therefore, it has to be done perfectly. Um, anything I missed, Ryan? Um, I would honestly skip ahead. So we had one of the questions like lager is a German word meaning what? Uh, lager means uh, like store, like warehouse storeroom. So lager beer was <laughs> beer, l- lager beer that was beer that was typically aged over the winter months, you oh. know. And so yeah, you you have it readily available. Uh, a Mai Bach, a May Bach is a Bach beer that has been aged through the winter, you know, until May. It's ready to go in the spring. Uh, but yeah, lager beer, it's it's really about uh, a longer sitting time. If you guys have heard of Kolsch. Kolsch is essentially a lager made as an ale. It tastes very similar, but it's a much faster turn time. So you're able to get that beer released. You know, uh, our brewery had just released a Kolsch, for example. Just because we had opened so recently, we can't be holding up a tank for 10 weeks to, to have a true traditional Pilsner style beer. So we did it, and you know, a Kolsch, it's a quicker flip and it's actually priced a little bit lower accordingly less ingredients, faster turn time. And so because we're able to turn it over faster, there's really no reason that we would charge the same amount as we would for a stout or, a, you know, an IPA. I thought Grolsch was a brand. Grolsch Lager. Not Grolsch. Not Grolsch. Kolsch. Kolsch. K-O-L-S-C-H. Right, yeah. Right. Grolsch, the swing top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, classic. people love those bottles. Yeah, that's, that's a winner. Oh, those huh? are 
<laughs> they're great. Yeah, no, those are great. Uh, but I mean, also like while, while we're talking about stout, I mean, it, ale is very often in the, you know, proper term for all of these beers. So every, even though we say stout, that's very, you know, t- you know, normal nomenclature, it's actually stout ale. India pale ale. We shorten everything. So we say stout, we say IPA, but there is ale always really tacked on to the end of, of most of these styles. I knew that India pale ale. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> so yeah, don't easy, easy to remember. Red ale, brown ale, you know, India pale ale. Now, stout ale. now you, you know how the rest of the world thinks about American generic beers, your Budweiser's, your cores, and all that type of stuff. Do you sure. subscribe being because you're craft beerman? Do you subscribe that the American beers are a bit crap, or I, I personally think they're okay? Either. I've never had a problem with them or anything, but 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 whenever I see Australian friends, they're always like, "Oh, how do you drink that fucking shit over there?" <laughs> fucking like that. Um, do you think they get a bad rap? Time and a place. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I know. I think the problem that craft beer is facing is that the American beers are meant to be consumed in bulk. You're walking out of the store with 30 packs, but you walk out of a brewery with a four pack, yeah. mm. you know, and the four pack of craft Pilsner is typically 12 to $16, but for 16 bucks, you can get 30 beers, you know? Mm. So if I'm going to the river and I'm going to lay in the river all fucking day, I don't necessarily want to go and load up on craft beer. It's going to be higher alcohol, more expensive. You know, yeah, you're not gonna play a beer bunch pong of, with a craft beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. crush yeah. a bunch <laughs> of Takatis. <laughs> that know, is true. Sure. Brutal. <laughs> I've actually played wine pong before. That, that that's good. It's like, it's like when you go you go into bottle shops and they have the little symbols underneath. Yeah. Do they do that here? They do it in Australia. So you'll see, and then they'll have a, like a, a symbol of a fish, and then there'll be a symbol of a steak, and all the things that you should have yeah, this yeah. alcohol with. Yeah, yeah. It'll be nice under the beer, just a so- beer pong, <laughs> <laughs> a red solo cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. That is funny though. They're like, do you like that IPA? They're like, what are you talking? <laughs> but like um, piggybacking off of, off of what Ryan just said, though. That being said, I do have Miller High Life in my fridge downstairs, so um, I am not above he's homeless. drinking some <laughs> of these. I, 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 I drank Heineken's for the last ten yeah. years of me drinking. I just I, I used to always have fond memories of going to Holland and they get the knife and they cut the heads off and all that type of stuff to keep it crisp. I used to, I I roofed for a summer in Florida like for like, like four months and when you were done roofing in Florida we'd always go and have some beers and there was never a time where we wanted like a dense beer. we were like give me a Coors Light like yeah I'm not drinking a oh, well, right if, now, if you like, go to like, England to this like, day there's people who live in England who don't get why they don't like any cold drinks of any you try asking for ice in England that's fuck wild. me they serve you ice with tongs. Yeah, with geez. fucking tongs, they don't have a scoop. <laughs> One, like yeah, they go two. like this, and they put the two cubes in, and then I go, "Can I have some more, please?" And, they, and then they they put another one in. Like, yeah, they're uh, rationing yeah. frozen water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they fucking won the war, and they still fucking. <laughs> anyway, so you go. Yeah, I, I always said to them, put so much ice in, you think I'm insane, and they're like, "All right." And they think they're putting a joke amount in, and then you're like, "That's what I wanted." <laughs> And, and there's a few things is because they're slightly cheap and they think that ice will be less for them. But it's also, you know, it goes back, I think, to the British dental plans, the rickety teeth mm. and the, the cold, it hurts me teeth. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> anyway, so they, they uh, but that's why they have like, they still have the pulled ales where you actually got a pump. You ever seen that? Yes. So you get a big handle and you actually just go pump, pump, pump. Like this is the beer. And they want that beer as warm as fuck. So what they mm. did was... In Britain, there was the younger generation that started liking cold beers. Now, if you go to Australia and you go to a bar, the beer taps are covered in ice. We like it so cold uh-huh. that they've started to freeze over on the beer taps is covered in ice until the shift ends and it melts, you know. Uh, in Britain, they have, they have Fosters and they have Fosters super cold. <laughs> and they have Guinness and they have Guinness super cold. And they have these filtration systems underneath that runs the beer through that makes it really cold before it goes through on a different tap. Yeah. That would never happen in another country. Here you would just here people fucking put their mugs in fridges like yeah. in, in Hooters and you're not meant to do that because that puts condensation and that puts water into the beer the same way as putting ice and it's meant to fuck around with the recipe a bit. Oh, I never thought about that. But I do that. love me a frosted glass. I love it. It's nice. <laughs> um, what does Was I right about the frosted glasses or was I was just talking out my ass right then? I heard you're not meant to have them. I'm not I'm not a big fan of, of uh, frosted glasses. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, uh, like like Ryan said though, uh, you know, time and place. Time and place at yeah. Hooters, I love it. But yeah. John at Tapper, Hooters, what's up? That's what's when up. John Tapper goes into Bar Rescue and he sees a frosted <laughs> glass, he loses his shit. You're losing <laughs> all the beer here. You're losing it all. You're running your business into the ground. Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> don't let anybody eat any more food. They're all gonna die. <laughs> what the? Don't don't sell anything else unless you're using my POS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he always redoes the bar, and it's got like two bottles of whoever the sponsor is that yeah, day. Yeah. We have right. Johnny Walker Blue and Johnny Walker Red. That's all the spirits we have. <laughs> and we're gonna be serving this beer you've never heard of. People are gonna come and they want to see this. And it's like they they ha- obviously there was a season where they were sponsored by Guinness. So it was always like, we put new beer taps in. These are the best beer taps you're ever going to have. And the only two beers were Guinness and Harp Lager. <laughs> the people in Ireland don't even drink Harp Lager, which is Guinness's <laughs> lager. They just sort of throw it out into the marketplace like, look, we do other things. No one, <laughs> no one gives a fuck Guinness. Make us that black stuff and fuck off. Um, what does a smash beer stand for? Jim didn't get this right. So what does uh, it A small for? amount of shitholes. Oh shit! You got it right. <laughs> a small amount of shit. Oh, fuck! You got it right. Uh, no, it actually stands for uh, uh, single malt and single hop. Mm. Uh, so basically, you use only one type of malt and only one hop, and make a beer with it. Okay. Uh, so there's different types of malts. Uh, so if you one of them is called like Golden Promise, for example, you could use Golden Promise, and you can and use that exclusively as like the grain to make the the liquid itself, and then for the hop, you use like you know just Citra or just Simcoe or one one type of hop. Uh, and that's and the beer that you get from that is a smash beer. So how with all these different hops and it being, a, and I assume this is for many food products, but how for hundreds of years, you know, where's a hundred or 100, how for a couple of hundred years has Heineken been making the beer that tastes exactly the same every mm-hmm. single time when we have so many variables in these recipes? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a, obviously with all these beers being made with natural ingredients that, you know, they're grown in different climates. You know, they're, you know, this could be a hot year. It could be a wet year. It could have been more rain, you know, it could have been less rain. Um, there's definitely variables in the ingredients. Um, I can't vouch for Heineken, but I've been on the Anheuser-Busch tour and like they tout that it's Beechwood aged. And one of the things I learned in that tour is mm-hmm. not because Beechwood adds anything to it, but it's because it actually strips flavor and it it's consistency. Mm-hmm. It's kind of in the same oh vain as to why all of starbucks coffee takes burnt tastes burnt to me yeah. and it's because they, they roast it so it all tastes the same <laughs> yeah I, I never thought about that but on the commercial it does say beechwood and it sounds good you're like mm, it sounds good yeah but it's actually made for, it's done that to kind of strip some of that flavor i like the beach uh, for consistency yeah i i would also say that the, the companies we were talking about are fucking richer than god so they have access to equipment that you know like brewers on 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 our level would imagine they exist uh but i also believe that they are just making so much product and you know they're getting so much grain at once and they're getting so much of a hop at once uh it, it kind of reminds me i was in buffalo new york last year and this lady drove her car into niagara falls and it was sitting at the edge and it ultimately went over and i was telling my dad holy shit like this car exploded on the rocks like think about all the Wait, engine you just saw a car go into <laughs> niagara falls <laughs> And Dude, you we missed over it by, a couple, wait, wait, it missed over, it by a couple hours. It went this over. was crazy. Oh. This lady oh. killed. You can look it up on YouTube. Don't do it fucking now. It's <laughs> psychotic. Yeah. This lady tried to kill herself, so she drove her car in at the edge of the falls, and it got stuck on these rocks at the very edge, and she couldn't get out, and she died in the freezing water. And there was a. We saw oh, them oh, airlift her out. It was yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> it was the craziest day to go to Niagara Falls ever. Right? It was like maybe they should put a fence around. What well, crazier the, the than that fence. day when that kid jumped off and Superman saved him? <laughs> Nah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, but in talking to my dad about it, I'm like, dude, this car went over the edge of the falls. Like, isn't that fucking crazy? Like, think about all the engine fluid and oil and everything that, that leaches into the water. And he's like, dude, I think you're underestimating how much water goes yeah. over the falls that it just gets blended out. So I think that analogy to your question about inconsistency of product, I think that when you're processing so much that you can throw in some shitty product and no one's going to notice yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. operating on a, a, a level that we cannot even fathom. You know, I, I guess we can because I've been to the same tour over in St. Louis. The tanks are big. I live in a three-story townhouse. The tanks are way bigger than than my house. Yeah, It's, yeah, it's yeah. fucking insane to be in that room. You feel 
My, my, I, I play, this is a bit of a name drop, but I played um, car soccer with Jay Leno and Jay Leno's show. I don't know if it's aired yet. But yeah, we, when is it going to air? But we played soccer in like Toyota Camrys and shit. They, were, they, they, they had roll bars in there and we had this big propane tank that was about four foot high that was the soccer ball and we just drove into each other at full pelt. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I said to him, I said, oh, what happens if the car catches on fire? Because I was really <laughs> strapped into this thing. The doors are all welded shut. And they're like, why would the car catch on fire? And I go, because we're smashing into each other. <laughs> And they go, you've watched a lot of movies, haven't you? And I go, I guess I have. <laughs> I still don't know why it doesn't catch on fire. It yeah. doesn't happen. So that doesn't happen? No, no. It turns out that like when you just shoot a car, it doesn't blow up yeah. either. Dinner party fact. Yeah. Yeah. What qualifies Dude, something point. as a craft beer? Just throw a slice of orange in it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, smaller yeah. breweries, uh, basically. Uh, smaller independent owned breweries. Uh, yeah, you did say that too, Jim. Sorry. There's been, yeah, yeah. Jim definitely got that one. Um then uh, there is a little bit of a sliding scale as far as what the number, like basically like breweries that produce less than, uh, what was it, two, two thousand, two hundred thousand, something like that. It was like a certain number. And then I think Sam Adams crossed that number. So then they made the number bigger to include Sam Adams in that. But essentially the, the, um, the, the by and large definition is essentially independent, independently owned, um, not, you know, the owners cannot be, uh, a, 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 you know, a part of a large, you know, beer conglomerate such as in Heiser Bush or, or, uh, or, you know, Molson Coors or, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just independently owns pretty much what. Yeah, so what, what do you reckon the best way to drink beer? Tap, bottle, can? Uh, shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been seeing this thing online and it, it makes sense. I like sense them to from me. the tap. I like tap it makes beer. sense to yeah, me same. about how you should pour it out and let the foam like it let it like kind of foam up because then it doesn't do that in your stomach. And that Definitely. actually I've been doing that and it when I have a beer and it makes sense to me and it's made me feel less full. Okay. If do you yeah. know oh, like wow. yeah. for, I was a bartender in London, I was a bartender in Australia as well, but a bartender, what, what's a lager top? What's a what? A lager top. If someone orders a lager top, what's that? Lager top? Not familiar. A lager top. No this is a British thing. They spray what they call lemonade, but a bit of Sprite in the top, just a little bit. And they go, yeah, a bit easier on the tummy, isn't it? A bit, a bit. <laughs> they have a little, you put a dash of lemon, dash of Sprite in the top of it. What's a shandy? Yeah, uh, so pretty okay. much that. A shandy, yeah, right. shandy's half and half. Yeah, shandy's half. Right, stuff and all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, it's that's a real. I I they and, and they ordered them on the regular. This was like I'll have a lager top, a lager top, a lager top, and they that was like a common thing. And I'd never fucking heard of it all. But yeah, the Brits. Yeah, I hadn't either. We're gonna start doing that at the brewery this week, and we'll call in it. Uh, we'll call it the gym special. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You ever had no a you ever had a snake bite? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I can't. The snake bite is, I believe, a, a half lager or half stout, half lager. Half strongbow, half cider, and then black uh, black currant uh, cordial dashed in there, so it's, it's a, all red it's cider, cider and lager. Yeah, cider lager and a bit of black currant cordial. You can smash those puppies all day. You'll wow. get fucking blind, and they drink like a coke. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! So I actually did look that number up because it's uh, it we we were surprised by this before. So to be considered craft, a brewery must produce less than six million barrels per year. Uh, it's good. We can skip ahead because that was a question. How much is a brewing barrel of beer? A barrel is 31 gallons. So for a brewery to be craft, they need to produce 6 million times 31. So I mean, do that math. Like. <laughs> so you guys are going to be craft for a while before you reach for sure. <laughs> for, yeah. until the end of time. Okay. All right. Good. It's right. not a, <laughs> so yeah, I, just I, psychotic. Sorry. IPA, India Pale Ale. You were, yeah, I, I, I remember that. that after the fact. Um, malt after liquor. To me. Jim did not know what malt liquor is. Um, I don't. So, I drank it. I don't really know. You've never it played is. Edward Forty Ounce. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know what that <laughs> is. Forty ounce. It's, well, yeah. it's where you tape Again, uh, forty ounce malt liquor to your hands, and you I've done you have to drink it before Americans. you can ever go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Americans in your drinking games. We love just binge get drinking. Fuck. You just drink though. <laughs> The rest of the world is just getting hammered and you guys are going, let's make a game of it. And like you're be beer ponging and you're doing all this type of stuff. And oh, come on. Beer pong's good. I've never played. What? I've never played a game of beer pong in my life. Well, we can play with I get beer. I get the gist of the game. I've seen it. I reckon you should be able to bounce the ball, but the fact that you have to just. We'll play it at the Halloween party. Yeah, be there. No, I'll be there. But, uh, you know, I'm, I've never alcohol gamed. 
We used to play a game called Goon of Fortune. It was a thing that we played as kids where we get uh, cask wine, like a bladder of wine, uh, which we call a bag of goon in Australia. Mm. And so the cheap wine. Then you get it on the clothesline and you pin it on and then you all stand underneath it. Then you spin the clothesline around, the hill's hoist around. You wait till it gets to you and then you have to skull from the bladder of goon. But that was really a thing you did when you were 14. <laughs> well, I would do that now. That sounds pretty good. Oh, it is fun. <laughs> it's goon of fortune. <laughs> Um, malt liquor though? Uh, yeah, malt liquor. It's uh, fermented instead of distilled. High, high gravity beer, high alcohol beer. Yeah, I used to drink that a lot when I was a kid. Um, and then we talked about hops a lot, but the noble hops we didn't get to. It's not when you hop around on one leg and say, my lady. <laughs> no, uh, uh, noble hops are effectively like the traditional German, Belgian um, hops, like uh, uh, hops that were kind of used more for floral uh, as opposed to like these, you know, the new the new uh, the new hops that people are going for, as Ryan kind of touched on earlier, was, like you know, these like very these hops that that uh, lend fruity tropical uh, uh, notes and aromas and flavors. Um, whereas the noble hops are these hops that they use for traditionally for pilsners and lagers, you know, in Europe. Um, uh, those are considered uh, noble hops. That any. Yeah. So what was, else, uh, what was the oldest beer company? I think I, I might have gotten close, but what's the oldest the, beer company? The oldest, the, well, there was two. There's the oldest brewing company in the United States and the oldest in the world. Okay, what's you said two? PBR in the United States? I don't know. Oldest in the U.S. is Yingling, so you nailed that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But Pabst Blue Ribbon is right <laughs> close, right? It was like a P year PBR later. Is close. Yeah, yeah, PBR is up there too. I only PBR remember that because I think it's on the label of Yingling. I I, like that, yeah. I still yeah. support even in my sobriety the good people at Pabst Blue Ribbon. Because they brought out a high salsa. And so I drink their weed beverages. Thanks, Paps and all the blue ribbon people. <laughs> and oh, those are those are great. Yeah. And then the oldest one in the world. Wine uh, Stefaner. Yeah, Wine Stefaner. Wine Stefaner. Okay, okay, how old where is where is that? Germany. Germany. How is how, Germany, how yeah. old is it? How old is that be? Uh let's see when they Yeah, we, if only That's we had a, a way question. to find out. <laughs> Find out, find out how old Stella and is as well, because I think Stella's super old. Wine Stefaner was founded in 1040. 1040, wow. okay. Wow. 1040's old. old. Yeah, 1040's so old. It's, it's a little I mean, older than Stella. Yeah, yeah Stella's 600 years Freising, old. Freising, Germany. Oh, it was 600 years. No, no, no slouch. 1366. What's, what's wow. Stella Artois' nickname in Great Britain? Stelly. Uh, Stelly. Wife beater. Oh, what? Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, meant to, it's meant to anger the blood a bit, Stella Artois, for some reason. <laughs> I I think that they're, they're, they're just blaming something else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I had some yeah. Stellas. What was I meant to do? <laughs> um, what, <laughs> what is the name of the foam on the top of fermenting beer? Jim said the yield. Go for it, right? Called, called Kreuzen. Kreuzen. Uh, the Kreuzen. That's, so uh, that's, that's a difficult one. Is that yeah, so disgusting? what it is what it is essentially it's just uh the yeast that's kind of like floated to the top and it's kind of doing its thing and uh it's called the it's commonly referred to as top cropping yeast. And you so get that out with fermenting. one of those pool scoops, do you? Uh no. So what happens is um in the process, uh right after the yeast is done fermenting, um they they lower the temperature in the tank. And what that does is that causes all of that Krausen to fall to the bottom. Mm. And then there's a, a valve on the bottom of the tank that they open up, then they just let it dump out until it runs clear okay and then so uh how many breweries are in the united states do we know this jim said 500 it seems 500. like five million seems like uh, a lot. little more than 500 um, what is it? it's like 8500 it's uh, a little over 8700 uh, by what, what, last count what are the actual businesses 8500 uh, so mm -hmm. there's 80 8500 different beer companies i can drink that i can go to the liquor store and buy no nah, well a liquor store somewhere I mean, uh, liquor store somewhere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, uh, the beers, or, the beers that like Ryan's Brewery uh, brews isn't sold in Chicago. So um, unfortunately, what did you I do, can't... Ryan? What did you do? Why is it you not just... sold in Chicago? <laughs> They're too cool for Chicago. Oh, yeah, they yeah, like yeah. No, they I would go never bloody that. hippies with their flower beers. They're not fucking coming into Chicago. <laughs> you could probably sell in Indiana. You probably do a booming business in Gary. <laughs> If you put a couple of guns on that label, then they'll, then they'll bring them <laughs> into Chicago. <laughs> yeah, we'll that's, Chicago. that's what part of your big battle, isn't it? The the label. The label is what draws people in. It's like... It's like, it's just like they are, but... I mean, these, yeah, are, yeah, these, these are, are great. These are awesome. Yeah. These are fun, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kids right. are like that. Born <laughs> <laughs> before. Oh, yeah. That's the teenagers. Yeah, you got them all. <laughs> you got them all. <laughs> teenagers to toddlers. Well, that's why. That's why. Like this. This. You know. Like when they brought out liquid death. That like the the, the yeah, water right. that comes in cans mm-hmm. that looks like it's With a beer. The skulls, yeah. With the skulls and that sort of stuff. My my wife who was actually just walked into the room. Hello. <laughs> my my wife who was pregnant at the time when liquid death came out. We are, and she's a very environmentally friendly person, my wife, and she doesn't like drinking out of plastic, so it's all glass or cans or whatever. So we, I bought cases and cases of liquid death and she really did just look like a pregnant woman who didn't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. She was just walking around <laughs> with this beer can in her hand just like answering the door and not many people knew about that yeah, yeah. stuff yet. She's like, I, was, I, I was on Zoom meetings and people are like, what are you drinking? I'm like, it's yeah. water. <laughs> water but, uh, um, it's good though for, for people that are sober, they can go to social events and still feel like, you know, it's like there is some judgment when you're not drinking. Well, that's so. why I like the high drinks. But another problem with being sober is, so in a day... Even if you you like you're just going a bit crazy, you wouldn't have more than two Coca Colas. You might have two cans of Coke if you're going a bit crazy, right? But when you go out and you give up drinking, and it goes like this, you go, "Well, I'll just have a Coke." And then the next cunt buys you a Coke, and you're like, "I really just needed one Coke this evening." <laughs> and then another person buys you a Coke, and it's like, I, I, "Okay, great, I'm sober, but I got fucking diabetes now." <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you, like, I don't want you people are all drinking to get fucked up. Don't act like yeah. you're drinking for any other yeah. reason. I'm not going rounds with you with my basic drink. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, hop water is exploding right now. It's 0.0%. So, I mean, it's not even slightly non-alcoholic. Uh, so I have some up coming into the brewery next week. It's made by a place in Colorado. But yeah, it's all local hops that they're bringing in super fresh. They're doing these double dry hop waters that when you pour it into a glass, it looks, it's fizzy yellow, looks like a beer. So, I mean, it's going to be huge again. Well, I drink the Heineken, perception, yeah. you know. Heineken Zero and it's pretty good. It's not, it doesn't yeah, taste quite not bad, right. right? It's pretty good. And I heard that's because no alcoholic beers used to taste like dog, like ass about 10 years ago. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard what happened was they used to synthetically try to make the beer taste and try to get it done. But now they actually make the beer, then they burn off the alcohol. And that's why they're yes. not completely alcohol yep. free. They're uh, zero, zero point two. You'd have to have a fucking 300 of them to feel a buzz. But, you know, yep. it's, it's so now they taste. And so there are some alcoholics that are like, no, it's still got alcohol in it, but it is so minimal it's the same as eating your grandmother's fucking christmas cake yeah right yeah absolutely and and again people are realizing that they don't want shit that's made with extracts you know yeah. natural flavorings and all this stuff and so these dealkalizers like we had talked about before like heineken can make a product that rips yeah, because yeah. they are they got the money for the machine you know well they they all seem to have one now they all mm-hmm. say every every brand seems to have churned one out what is the most common style of beer brewed by the big breweries? Jim said lagers. Lagers. That's correct. Lagers. Yep. Yeah, all day. Yeah. Ten out of ten. All day. In the warehouses. And, and then and then we were talking about gross lager with the pop tops, and then we're talking about like uh, I'm trying to think of other like uh, Beck's with the foil on the top and all that type of stuff. Uh, aren't those things a fucking pain in the ass to make? Or is that just oh, a, absolutely? You know what I mean? Like they go, we're going to have to put foil on the top of each one, or do they just see mm-hmm. that as their brand and all that type of stuff. Or is that easy? I mean, do? these days, if you have a business that you have a need, there is a company that will create a machine for you. So right. I have a friend; he has a meadery in Arizona that they did swing tops, and their staff, as they were coming off the bottling line, was having to swing each one. And he said the blisters on their thumbs, it's like an 80s kid, you know, arcade fingers. Mm. So he reached out to a couple companies that they make packaging machines. And he says, I need a machine that closes a swing top lid, puts a plastic seal and applies heat to it. And somebody made the machine for him. So, you know, as long as you have the need these days, you can pretty much get whatever you want, which is pretty cool. What is a phenolic, phenolic taste in a finished beer? Phenolic? Yeah, phenolic. Phenolic. Yeah, phenols. Um, I mean, phenols don't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It, it most certainly can be, but it really depends on like the kind of beer that, that you're having. So right now, like I'm having a Saison. Um, phenols in Saisons, I mean, like uh, bubble gum, pepper, uh, spice, you know, like anything that's going to, uh, you know, in a lager type setting, like if you're noticing these beers that have these flavors, it's going to be completely off. But phenol, it's a naturally, uh, typically naturally occurring from the yeast. But if you're not making cl- beer in a clean environment, say a bathtub, you know, you're more likely to end up with these other flavors. 
Okay, and yet can yeast survive and, and, and continue to ferment in environments like as high as 15% alcohol by volume? Jim said it oh, can. Oh, God, yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And so is that bad? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's a, it's very hard work. Uh, like there's obviously you need to select a very specific yeast strain, but then you need to make sure that that yeast is healthy and can survive in what is it, you know, what is a harsh environment for that yeast, 15% and up alcohol. Um, uh, actually fun, fun story. Uh, the brewery that, that one of the breweries that Ryan used to work for makes a beer that, you know, ranges anywhere from 19 to 22% alcohol. Holy shit. And, um, uh, and that beer, uh, is the beer that I, when I first started brewing, set out to try to make myself at home. Uh, spoiler alert, I still have not made that beer. Uh, <laughs> however, um, that beer is what got me into brewing in the first place. So Ryan is my hero for that. But uh, but yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, Jim was correct. Uh, you, it can survive, but it's, uh, you, need, you know, yeast is a living thing. So you need to keep it healthy and make sure that it has, you know, oxygen, make sure it has, uh, you know, nutrients, vitamins, you know, just uh, what is effectively vitamins are nutrients and uh, everything right. it needs to survive and be healthy. So, so vitamins, nutrients, I, I always find it fascinating when something is like, you know, alcohol or something that is d deemed mostly bad for our health. You know what I mean? What mm -hmm. is the benefits of beer? What, what goodness can an alcoholic say to themselves they're getting in? An alcoholic. <laughs> an alcoholic, yeah. I'm, I'm like, well, fuck. I, mean, I was, I was following until you said alcoholic. No, no, no. Uh, you know, know what I mean? Like, like some guy at the end of the bit about it's like this. Well, at least I'm getting my blah 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 in. Your bread, yeah. your bread. Yeah, because like, there's, I've heard that Guinness has like, like a whole heap of amino acids and is right up there. Like you can they, protein and yeah. They used yeah, to, they used sure. to, they, so much iron in it that they used to give uh, women right up until the 80s in Ireland. As soon as they gave birth, they would hand them a Guinness. And that was meant to give you back all your iron and the nutrients that you lost in the placenta because that was something. Plus, they're Irish and they, they're just, <laughs> oh, you did a good job. And uh, you know what I mean? But uh, so, so they used to do that in the hospitals with Guinness. So what is like a thing where you go, oh, because, you know, you talk about wine. Red wine has actually ox antioxidants. And if you drink a couple of glasses every week, that's good for you. Is sure. there redeeming features of beer for your health? I mean uh, – Go, 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 go. Uh, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they are not substitutes for actual vitamins and actual minerals. Um, but that being said, though, like, uh, for example, sour beers can have, you know, um, you know, lactobacillus and cultures that, you know, are found in kombucha, for example, that can improve gut health right. uh, in that in that regard. Um, I mean, be yeah, beers do have beers. I've seen that. Mm. Yeah, there's that too. Um, but like, yes, yeah, sour beers can have um, those cultures, which are good for your gut health. Um, they uh, obviously do contain proteins. Uh, they do contain uh, uh, carbohydrates, which obviously give you energy. Um, also get you drunk. The alcohol gets you drunk anyway. Um, but you could make an argument know. for mental health. I just had a rip. unless people are abusing it, but you know when right. you get to share a beer with friends and it's makes you happy. You can say the same stuff. thing about heroin, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, there's a community. It's not good for my mental health. There's right a good now, community so. feel about heroin <laughs> as you it's share the needle. Slope. Yeah, you get a lot of sleep. I tell you, I was in. Now this might sound a bit bad, but I was in, and Andrew Wontok did it, but I didn't do it. I just said I had, I was feeling not well. But I was in one of the townships in South Africa, which is like the small, you know, the, the, the slum areas where they have the small little houses. Just outside of Cape Town. Just outside of Cape Town. We were doing a field piece there. Not many people walk through the townships, but we went there for a field piece on the, on the TV show. And they, there was a guy who basically did these slum tours. He's a nice fella, but he, would, he was making money. He'd walk people around and say, this is our nightclub. This is our thing. This is the toilet, you know. So... So he took me to the fucking, the, the bar and he goes, here in South Africa, right? he goes, we're, it's, it's, we all share. And they were drinking out of a fucking, a can that was like this. That was, it was a with, bucket. It was a bucket that they had fucking fermented beer in and they were handing it around all the blokes Ugh. in the township to drink from the edge. And I was like... No. It's a backwash. Oh, I got some great yeah, photos Andrew of that moment. That. And then I, I said, but I have a friend who is feeling a lot better who yeah. will do it. <laughs> Produ our producer. Yeah, 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 he fucking did it. Yeah, yeah. too right he did. Um, Trappist beers must be brewed on the grounds of what? Jim said Harlem just because I said rap. But I don't know if that's right. Monastery. Uh, monastery. 
I've had okay. Trappist is my favorite beer of all time. We have we have a we have yeah. a, I have a oh beer. My gosh. I have a beer yeah, yeah. whenever I'm in Europe. We have a friend called Barang. He's your he's your promoter. Yeah, Barang. Your, your European Barang, promoter. Barang is from Sweden. Yeah. Barang's a very nice fella. Barang uh, tours me around Europe and he comes on all the trips. At the end of the tour. And at the end of the yeah. tour, he gives me a beer every time. And I think the beer's like 150 bucks a bottle or something like that. But it's it's from a monastery and yeah. they only create, you know, one batch yeah. of it every year. And there's yeah. only like a thousand bottles on earth. We and, always have it in Sweden because yeah. he's got to go to his house And to then get he goes, it. here is the special yeah. monastery beer. <laughs> as a, Thank you for the trip and yeah. we will drink it together. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, so I have my monastery beer every time. Yeah. Because the, the monks can't even talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah, how do they know they're not fucking it up then? They just focus. Is it is it Rochefort? Is that how it's pronounced? The Trappist Rochefort 10? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, that's, my, Rochefort, that's, Rochefort, that's yeah. my favorite yeah. beer. It's thirteen percent, delicious. Ooh. Um, and then the beer <laughs> brewed with more honey than grain is not called Winnie the Pooh. I don't think. No, it is not Ooh. called Winnie the Pooh. That is called a braggot. Uh, so, it holy is, shit, uh, dude! It's tw- can't talk like. That. Just <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I, 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 I really wanted to let him take that one. I feel I, so I fucking know. uncomfortable saying that word in 2022 in California. <laughs> what braggot? Yeah. Why? Because it, it sounds a lot slur. like a different word. Than oh, everyone's it rhymes with a different word. Oh, everyone's okay. everyone's yeah. triggered and then half paying attention in public. They're like, "Wait, what'd you Tag say?" It. It's like, yeah. yeah. So there's no. So this came up actually when you were initially asked the question. There's no actual honey production unless you want there to be no honey content in most beers. But um, if you do, you can add honey for sweetness for additional alcohol because it does ferment out. Um, if you wanted to do that, but if it's over fifty one percent honey. Uh, so if it's like 51% honey, 49% grain, um, because honey is sugar, so it will ferment just like that grain will. Uh, so um, if it's over 51%, it's it's no longer considered a beer. It's considered a braggot. Yeah. I'll, tell, I'll tell you it's what. Like tequila. I'll tell you Same what thing. beers yeah. can fuck yeah. off, right? And it's always someone has brought them over to your house for Christmas, and they're sort of sitting there, and you have one, right? It's any time they infuse a bit of chocolate into it. Fuck those beers. <laughs> Yeah, fuck make- the, like a chocolatey stout, and it's like you know, I don't, I don't mind if it has chocolate overtones, but you make it like a, ugh. no, no, it's not worth. Well, I mean, like that's that's where the the artistic component comes in is like how do you derive those flavors from malt without adding fucking candy bars to it? You know. Although I would have a Snickers, Anybody can Snickers dump beer all beer. fucking day, man. Mm-hmm. You got a Snickers beer, put a few. Do they ever put nuts in there? Put a bit of nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nuts yeah. would be good with a beer. Um, Twizzlers. <laughs> gen- gen- generally speaking, a session beer needs to be low in what? Uh, you said alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, okay. yeah, I got a point. In the brewing process, the fermentation step turns sugar into alcohol, and what else? Not yellow six, as uh, as Jim mentioned. Uh, it's carbon dioxide. Um, so if you ever go to a brewery, you see usually a bucket or on the floor or next or hanging from a, a tank that's bubbling. That is. Uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, that's being um, emitted from the from the uh, fermentation process, and uh, and actually in some breweries they actually uh, they allow rather than letting it dump out into a bucket like a lot of breweries do, they actually um, trap that in the uh, in the actual tank, and that's what naturally will carbonate a beer in some instances. Okay. Uh, actually, what's really interesting about that, so every brewery obviously has like a bulk CO2 tank. And so CO2, where most breweries get it, it is a byproduct of uh, fermentation from soil, you know. Uh, so it, with with COVID, that is why there is this CO2 shortage that you've heard about, why prices are through the roof. But with there being less people out working, less farming, that is where the CO2, it gets trapped naturally, those, those greenhouse gases packaged and then sold back to sold back to us. So it's a crazy business model if you think about that too. All right, just quickly around the room, starting with Jack, going to Kelly, going to Forrest, going to me, and then going to you guys. Um, name your number one mass-produced beer company where you go, that's the one that I, if, if I go into the store, I'm buying that 12-pack in the cardboard box. What's your number one, Jack? I will go Modelo. Modelo? Mm-hmm. Well, that's still kind of fancy. Yeah, Modelo. All right. Kelly B. I would probably go Stella or Heineken. Stella, or, well, you have to pick one. Uh, I'm gonna go Stella. Yep, Stella. Mass produced. Uh, I drink Corona all the time because I always drink tequila. I like corona too. And if I'm doing a shot, oh, I, I like Corona. Like, corona gets a bad rap. I like Mexican beers. I just if I need to chase, if I'm doing a shot, I usually just sip tequila. But if I'm drinking shit, yeah, just Corona. Yeah. Oh, I'm going Heineken. New lads. 
Yeah. I life S- easy, easy. Sierra Nevada. You said mass produce. You did not have to say that it, it couldn't still be craft. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I mean, you can get it almost everywhere, and it is uh, still one of the beers that got me into this industry, and it's still just as special as it was the, the first time I had it. Good answer. And uh, when was your first beer? Do you remember your first beer? Um, I, I think I gave Jack his. <laughs> Definitely Heineken. my first Heineken, yeah. I think, yeah, Jack, Jack had never had a Heineken. It was like sitting down with your dad. <laughs> I only no, could no, half. don't drink it. Don't put it straight back. Don't put your mouth around the entire hole. Oh, <laughs> you've done it. Oh, okay. No deep throat? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but I just uh, remember sipping some beers with Pops. My dad used to homebrew a little bit, so that kind of sparked an interest early on. But uh remember like really, really getting into beers when I was in high school just using a buddy's ID. Actually, the, the first time I went to the brewery where I used to work was with a fake ID on a date with a girl. And I was like trying to impress her and hated the fucking beers and then ended up working there for, for almost six years later. So round and round. We oh, go. I was I was one of the most pretentious little 15 year old you've ever met. And I'd be like, I'd go up to parties. I'd score some beers. I'd have some Tui's, Australian Tui's, Tui's dry, which I like. right? And I'd have them there and I'd be like, you're drinking Forex. <laughs> it's not a very good bit. Like 15, like this. Not very good. <laughs> this has got more of a crisper. Say so the word crisp a lot drier <laughs> taste. I was a wanker. I had my old Still English, am. old English malt liquor. Oh, yeah. That was my shit. Um, Let's go. Uh, okay, so uh, which ingredient is malted at the beginning of the brewing process? Is that barley? Barley. Bar- barley. You got that right, Jim. You did better than you think. Yeah. And then the final step in beer production is it putting it into the bottles? Man, we like really went back and forth on this one because I think this is pretty confusing. Uh, the final step in beer production, even when you're fucking canning beer. So, I mean, like the answer could be filtering. It could be packaging. So putting into bottles, capping, yeah. whatever. I mean, as a step in beer production, you're definitely pulling one off the line and drinking it. So, I mean, like what is the final step putting it in the cold box to sell it? Like there's so many different answers. So I had to give you full credit on that one. But uh, I would say the final step in beer production is filter it if you're going to filter it and then move to packaging so i got a, i got a job very briefly i never actually had the job but my job was going to be i was going to work for budweiser during uh it would be the 2002 world cup right and i was going to have to put all the bunting up around bars because budweiser always is involved with the world cup right so they'd give me mm-hmm. a smart car that was just looked like a beer can that i'd drive down the street i'd go there i'd put the display which i would have been terrible at this job because i can't make anything look nice but i had to go there and you know be funny or whatever in the in the in the um the job application anyway the, the next step was um before you could work for budweiser and i was, it was like thirty thousand pounds a year in a car it sounded pretty good to me and the, the next step before i could work for budweiser that budweiser uh, made me get a drug test where they took a hair follicle and to see now i had taken ecstasy like the day before <laughs> there was no way there was no way i was gonna pass this fucking thing right? but you know you go in you're like Let's have a go. Let's see. <laughs> I did not. They found loads mm. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you broke the I, got, I got fired seven times. <laughs> Could have been drunk when you walked in there. Probably. <laughs> uh, what causes skunked beer? Is it aeration? Yeah. Uh, Ox- go ahead. Yeah, oxygen. I was going to, yeah, oxygen, uh, sunlight, oxygen. I mean, clear bottles. That's why uh, some breweries prefer that kind of skunky flavor. So, like a Corona, for example, like, that flavor that makes it so unique is skunking. And I mean, a little bit of it is acceptable in certain beer styles, but yeah, more often than not, it is just a uh, result of light or oxygen. How long should a beer last if you buy it from the store and keep it in your house? Because like, uh, you ever heard of VB from Australia? That's the number one drunken beer in Australia, Victoria Bitter, Yep. right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Victoria Bitter. And so VB, uh, they reckon there's enough chemicals in VB that it will outlast the cockroaches in the, in the nuclear holocaust. You know what I mean? Like so, sure. so how long should a beer last? Because they have used by dates on them somewhere. Yeah, sure. there's there's a lot of variables that go into that. Um, not only you know obviously you, you just mentioned loads of chemicals in in VB. Uh, you know that obviously plays a part for their in, you know for their benefit. However, uh, you know, IPAs have a little bit shorter shelf life than, you know, a, Bud- a Budweiser, for example, because those hops are very volatile compounds, which break down over time. Um, also, too, if you keep that beer on your counter versus in your refrigerator, uh, that also plays a part, you know, keeping it in the fridge will extend its uh, shelf life. Mm. Um, 
But there's a lot of variables. So, I mean, easy answer, IPAs, I would say, you know, right around three, three to six months, you know, around there. Uh, whereas a, uh, you know, a Miller Lite, a Bud Light could, you know, last up to a year maybe. Um, but. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I'm drinking some old ass beers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 same. Yeah. yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some in my cupboard that have definitely been there since before I gave up alcohol. So, <laughs> and, I, and I give them to guests when they come over and I haven't had a drink for a year and a half. I was still in my grandfather's garage. That might have been there for years. But, um, okay, last question. I feel like with you know, just just butt in real quick. I feel like something that that people can look forward to with those answers, with those timelines being much, much, much longer. Uh, the timeline that I'm looking for for my beer is uh, you know ideally six weeks, nine weeks, and we'll, that beer will be completely sold out and on to the next. So, uh, any and considering just pulling it off the shelves. Do you believe beer drunk is different than the liquor drunk? I always believe that beer yes, drunk sir. had a different Absolutely. vibe. Jolly. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's jolly. Some it, jolly it, shit. Yeah, it's uh there's not a there's not a lot of dancing with the beer drunk. There's <laughs> no, a lot of, there's a lot no. of sitting down. <laughs> yeah. A lot of labored movements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of bread. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, what, what's wrong with you? I just had twenty six slices of bread <laughs> <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> uh, so last question, what is geese? Where does it come from? Man, Ricky, you want to? Uh, yeah, so it? what it's uh, it comes from Belgium. Uh, it's uh, historically from Belgium, um, and what it is, it's uh, this is a pretty complex answer actually, because there is a Belgian style of beer called lambic, which is uh, typically sour. It's not always sour, but it's essentially uh, brewed with yeast. That's yeast and bacteria, uh, which kind of bring out different flavors and. Uh, Gies or goose or goza, however you choose to pronounce it, um, is typically a blend of uh, lambics that have been aged from two years, one year, and they blend uh, old lambic with young lambic. Um, it's a pretty involved process, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a very unique style of beer. Are you goza? Because yeah, uh, I am zool. Uh, it's a, uh, a, I love that gatekeeper. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a beer that is typically inoculated with wild yeast and bacteria found in the Belgian countryside. And so it's very much a beer of the seasons. And so it's uh, very near and dear to Belgian tradition. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it's a blend of that, one, two and yeah. three year old golden sour beers, uh, you, very you, lightly soured with. You go bacteria. into bars in Belgium. That's the best beer I've ever had. It's very good, but fuck me. There's literally some bars that have 300 beers in them. Yeah, and you're like, I, yeah. I, I, when we were, I, no, we, need, I don't know what to pick now. When we went to Antwerp, we went to like that jazz bar thing the promoter took us to, and I don't even. She just kept saying, "Order that, order that, order that," and I'm not even a huge beer guy. And every single beer I had was the best beer I ever had. And we were in Antwerp, like just in some bar, and it was fucking amazing. Like I that 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 made me love beer like again like in Belgium there it was like we yeah. actually got invited as a like I said like a ten week old brewery we got invited to a Belgian beer festival in Antwerp they are paying for our plane tickets for wow. the beer for the hotel oh, it's like awesome. an all expenses paid Congrats. trip so I'm gonna be in Antwerp second week in November oh, so man, yeah if you it. send have it have over. and like like uh, like, been. like uh, the uh, honor that the Belgians are asking Americans to come over because uh, that's that's one of the places uh, where it's looked down no Americans they're a bit snobby about the whole thing that's so cool too because it's like all the old Old building you just walk around and see it's, yeah. it's, it's really cool yeah um all right cool um here's Good a part, chocolate man here's a part of our show called dinner party facts we ask our experts to give us some sort of obscure interesting fact that our listeners can use to impress people um i will right, start with ricky what do you got for us um so fun fact corona which is actually the best-selling non-domestic beer in the u.s mm. uh was it u.s uk and canada i believe um, was originally brewed to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Modelo, which is its parent company. Fun fact. Uh, nice. Well, they uh, is it true? Well, is it true that the they put the limes on there for sanitation reasons? Because I I love a lime in a Mexican beer and all that type of stuff, but I heard that it was to you know, keep flies away or the bottles hadn't been sterilized enough and the citrus would actually help. I I, I heard that it was a sanitationary thing to begin with. Uh, I, I'm not so sure that's true. I mean, any, uh, sanitation is pretty much at the core of any halfway reputable brewery, uh, including, 
uh, Modelo or Corona, you know, which is actually nowadays it's actually owned by Anheuser Busch, so which is the largest. Well, I'm not saying Corona is such. I'm just saying Mexican beers historically oh, okay. all have the limes, and then they've just picked up and run with it. But maybe that yeah. was just a bit of mild racism I heard. <laughs> it might be, and I know I know who told us that too. Uh, who told us? I won't say it right now. I'll say it afterwards. Yeah, we've got a friend who told us. Yeah, is it who I think it is? I don't know who you're thinking. Yeah, we know who it is. Yeah, we know who it is. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, it was mild racism. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, oh, hey, I've heard it too. <laughs> no, uh, but like any any brewery, I mean, if if it's if you don't have you know sanitized bottles, you're gonna get sour sour Corona essentially, so um, or sour Modelo. So it's not uh you know you don't want that. So I think it might be some. Mild racism, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, but it tastes delicious. Yeah. No, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Yeah, was I was one of the first bars I ever walked into with a fake ID, and I was like 16 or something like that. And I walked up and went, oh, I'll have, uh, what will I have? Uh, I'll have a couple of Coronas, please. And then it came and the guy had the lime in it. No, I'd never fucking had a Corona like yeah. this, right? And then I, I sort of didn't know whether I was meant to squeeze it in the top or put my thumb in. I was looking around and he goes, he goes, you know how to drink that, right? I go, yeah, yeah, of course. He goes, yeah, you got to put it in. You put your thumb over and then shake it two times, right? And I'm like, oh, boy. oh okay. And I <laughs> boop, boop, in my face. <laughs> and I'm 16. I just sat there. And <sighs> just drank this foamy half a beer. <laughs> That's how I like it. I think he checked my ID afterwards and kicked me out. So all I got was <laughs> yeah. half a beer on my face and half a beer on my belly and fucking kicked out and they all got to laugh. <laughs> um, oh, I love that. What do you got for us, Ryan? Yeah, I, I feel like uh, big beer is like the most relatable and the most fun to talk about at a dinner table. So a couple cool fun facts about Anheuser-Busch. I, I couldn't really pick one. Uh, they pasteurized their product before milk was pasteurized in America. That is fucking crazy. It was also the first to be moved by a rail car. Sick. Uh, Anheuser-Busch as a company employs more people than the entire craft beer segment of America. Last count, we as uh, small independent breweries were around 130,000 and they employ between brewing, distribution, you know, all of that, 150,000 people. So they are massive. still yeah. fucking massive. Not after that um, drug test I had to do. Oh, <laughs> 149,000. You, know, you know they do. Because, yeah, there's so much driving, forklifts, all that kind of stuff. And then the one that I think is really cool is everybody knows the game Root Beer Tapper, but uh, Anheuser Busch had originally reached out to Bally, you know, Bally Hotels. <laughs> when they were making arcade games to have a bartending simulator video game. So Root Beer Tapper was actually originally just called Tapper. It was a Budweiser game that they ended up repurposing and throwing out into arcades as a Root Beer Tapper. So that's pretty fun. A game that a lot of kids play has a lot of a uh, a lot of basis in, in bartending. And even though all the shit is fun, I mean, this company is fucking atrocious. Uh, they are actively trying to <laughs> squash us and every other brewery uh, of, of mine and Ricky's size. So support your local brewery. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, no, you go support the smaller yeah. ones until they get too big and then crush them as well. <laughs> crush them too. Yeah, to get them out of the way. But that's it. That's the thing. Like, like the Guinness Book of Records is made by Guinness, and it was to solve bar fights, right? Right. Bar, bar arguments. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Well, speaking of yeah, that, I reckon the person who could wear the most plates on their head is probably a guy from Italy. <laughs> they got flat heads over there. Well, speaking of that, go visit Ryan at uh, the Everywhere Brewery in Orange, California. You can find information about them everywherebeer.com or on Instagram at Everywhere Beer Co. And Ricky, um, check him out at the Foreign Exchange Brewing.com and on Instagram at Foreign Exchange Brewing. Guys, thank you so much for being here. That was pretty awesome. Well, thank for you so much us. for being on the show. If you're ever at a party and Someone comes up to you and goes, hop, 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 me lady. Go, I don't know about that. And walk away. Me lady. <laughs> You're not Australian. <laughs>